saves me. I will trust him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Friends, we worship today remembering Jesus Christ who has called us into service and enlisted us in a new creation. We have been shown much love, mercy, and grace. This forgives our past, renews our present, and prepares us for the future. We worship today giving thanks for all that has been as we look forward to the coming future, knowing that nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ who promised to never leave nor forsake us. So we listen in silence to renew our strength. We desire to experience a sense of God's power and presence in our lives. We worship on this World Communion Day, joining Christians around the world in sharing this sacrament. Our scripture reading is Psalm 19. <clears throat> the heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims His handiwork. 
day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The percepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Will you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Almighty God, from the ends of the earth you gather us around Christ's holy table. We join with our sisters and brothers around the world in remembering Christ's sacrifice for us, for the opportunity to eat and drink together, and for the life we have received, we give you thanks and praise your name. In the abundance of your many gifts to us, grant us grace to fill another person's life with love. Redeem, restore, remold us until we are made new. Transform our daily bread into the bread of life, and the cup we drink into the cup of salvation. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to hear these words for our sermon today from Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. Jesus says, Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there among Anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if a child asks for a fish, will give a snake? Well, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? I'd like to reflect with you today on this question. How hungry are you? Most of us had something to eat this morning, so we're not very hungry. We take food for granted, don't we? We do not know hunger. We waste so much food, it is sinful. 
Even as we are here this morning, there are millions of people starving to death while we join Weight Watchers and go on diets. Friends, I, I've been unable to ever get out of my mind's eye the pictures of starving children in our newspapers and magazines from time to time. I personally experienced hunger and saw starvation firsthand when I was in Liberia, Africa the first time during their tragic civil war. You know, I, I've been with people who died through the years of my ministry, but I still shudder when I think of those two little girls I sat with and watched die when I was in Liberia in 1992. Emaciated, misshapen from lack of food, they died without a whimper. The look in their eyes haunts me to this very day. It's not easy for me to talk about. Such a tragic waste of life. About the same time, Bishop Arthur Kula told me that the long-range effects of that tragic civil war could not be known for years. Oh, the guns were silent. People began getting back to some semblance of life. But the damage to the body and mind that comes when one is hungry and almost starves affects that person forever. How hungry are you? You and I don't know what it is to really do without, do we? We have had so much for so long, we take it for granted as a right. And I suspect that this might also be true of our religious faith as well. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its flavor, of what value is it? Moffat translates it to say, If salt becomes insipid, what can make it salt again? You know, insipid means without tang or spice. And as I read the scripture, I discover that Jesus was looking for tangy people, People with spice and zip, not insipid persons who were comfortable with things as they were. He knew that when a person loses their zest or their tang, they don't count for much. So how does a person become insipid, you may ask? Well, when they play it safe and don't take a stand for anything. When they straddle the fence and try to make everyone happy. When they try to play both ends against the middle. When they don't speak up when bad is happening around them. When one is content to be good, but not intentionally good for anything. When they defend status quo. You know, today we need less knowledge of what one is against. We need to know more of what one is for. When life is unthinking, routine, shallow, and safe, then one has become insipid. And if we're not careful, this sacrament of the Lord's Supper can become insipid for us as well. When I was a student in high school in Nolan, Texas, we won our district in six-man football and had the chance of going all the way to the state playoffs for the first time in the history of that little school. Just prior to the regional game, Coach Freeman said to us, Boys, the hungrier team will win this game. Well, we went out and we had a great first half and we led by 14 points. But then we lost the game by 7 points. And his only comment to us following the game was, I guess I didn't coach you to be hungry enough. I've never forgotten that statement. There was a catch in his voice along with a tear in his eyes. None of us would look at him. I often wonder how often God must feel that way about us. We gather to worship. We come for the Lord's Supper. Then if we could hear God speak to us, what might God say? So, 
How hungry are you? What is it you most want God to do in your life today? Jesus said, ask. You know, it's only as we admit our need and our hunger that this sacrament takes on renewed meaning for us. When one ponders anew the love of God in the light of our own sinfulness, then taking this sacrament moves from being a solemn and subduing experience to one of challenge. It invites us to be filled with a power that is beyond this world's ability to give us. Thomas Shepherd has written, Alas, my God, that we should be strangers to each other. Oh, that as friends we might agree to walk and talk together. May I taste this communion, Lord, that thy people have with thee. Thy spirit daily talks to them. Oh, let it talk to me. How hungry are you? What do you really want in your life with God right now? May God grant us the joyous tang and, and spice of life rather than the insipid sameness that robs life of meaning and creates dullness and boredom. How hungry are you? Today we participate in the Sacrament of Holy Communion in which we dip a small piece of bread in a cup of grape juice after which we eat it. We do this remembering Jesus told us to do this in remembrance of him. These small symbols become for us holy reminders of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Through them, we are connected to a love and power beyond ourselves, forgiving our sins and renewing our spirits with courage and hope. So friends, let's give thanks to the Lord our God as it is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. The one who made, the one from whom every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. Almighty God, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Jesus commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. We remember that on the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread 
and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with you and with your church throughout the world, and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your Spirit, God, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to take the bread you have prepared and the cup and to eat and drink remembering Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I invite you to hear the benediction. Remember, we worship a God who never slumbers nor sleeps, as God is creating all things new. May God save us from being impediments to discovering the new God is creating in our midst. May Almighty God bless you with confidence in living, with hope in your relationships, and joy in living your faith. And above all, 
May you know peace in the core of your being as evidence of your faith. And may it be seen in your relationship with others. Amen. And God bless you. Eternal 